For those who have taken on this larger than life challenge, they will say that it is the ultimate battle between man, machine, and the earth's elements. Dating from the beginnings of dirt bikes to the insane new trophy trucks that defy the laws of physics, this race truly is a man's inherent need to conquer the impossible. There can only be one race that is categorized as the hardest in the world, and this race is none other than the Baja 1000. When people enter this race, they do not know if they are going to finish it or not, so just crossing the finish line can be so important to many people. It is 1,000 miles of pure rugged terrain, and it is definitely not easy to complete, so if you do end up finishing, that is a huge accomplishment. Throughout this speech, I will be taking you on a journey throughout all the years of the Baja 1000. First, we'll discuss the 60s and 70s and the beginnings of the Baja 1000. Second, we'll discuss the 80s and 90s and the adventures in the machinery and the introduction of the new trophy truck. Third, we'll talk about the 2000s and the modern day technology that is placed into all of these vehicles. If you, play, if you pay close attention, you'll hear me talk about the crazy amount of people who travel to come spectate and the fatality percentage of this race. The Baja 1000 first began in 1967 and was founded by Ed Perlman. According to a June 2005 reading of 1000 Miles to Glory, the author states that the beginning of this race started out with just two classes, which consisted of dirt bikes and sand rails. These dirt bikes and sand rails were very basic and had little to no suspension, but where there's a will, there's a way. These diehard motorcycle riders decided to ride 1,000 miles through the world's most rugged terrain and compete to see who could do it the fastest. You have to be pretty insane to be able to come up with an idea, with an idea like that. To think about there only being two classes racing in the Baja 1000 is very weird because I've always known it as this huge, crazy race. According to an August 2004 reading of seven years from start to finish, Rod Koch gives you a full rundown of the epic ride it is we call the Baja 1000. That is this book right here. And that is the bug that he wrote in. Coach was a driver of a Baja bug, which was in a sand rail class. In the very first years of the Baja 1000, he was one of the best drivers and was always pushing to win the race. He loved this race so much that he wrote a whole entire book about it. Throughout this novel, he talks about the seven gruesome years it took for him to finally reach the top of the podium. In 1975, Rod Koch was finally able to conquer the Baja 1000 and take the first place trophy home with him. This novel gives you a great rundown in detail of just how tough you have to be to compete in the world's hardest race. Through the beginnings of this historical race, though the beginnings of this historical race have quite some stories of their own, the later years only get better and better. During the 80s and 90s, there were many new upgrades that took place in the motor vehicle industry that changed the game forever. According to the SCORE International Off-Road Racing website, last access March 18th, 2021, the first ever year that the trophy truck was introduced was in 1994. Here are just some basic pictures of a trophy truck. And here's another one that I printed out. They're pretty cool. There was very little rules to what could and couldn't be done as modifications to these trophy trucks. So the race teams were making these cars go as fast as possible over the rough terrain that was in front of them. Traveling at speeds of up to 140 miles per hour and destroying everything in its path, these vehicles, these trucks took this race to a whole new level. With great performance out of a vehicle, there's going to be great costs. These trucks can run you anywhere from $600,000 to a million dollars, depending on how far you go with upgrades. I guess it is safe to say that there's nothing else on the market that could even come close to competing with one of these trucks. According to Baja Bound Adventures, last access March 18th, 2021, the 80s brought us some of the most famous Baja legends. Throughout these years, guys such as Rod Hall, Walker Evans, and Mikey Thompson walked into the scene of Baja racing. Each of these men play a huge role in today's aftermarket off-road industry. This is due to the fact that they all created it. They all happen to have five first place wins in the Baja 1000. They all happen to have first place wins in the Baja 1000, and I will be showing some of the race courses that all these men raced on.
Here is a map of the Baja 1000 race course in 1980. You can see this black line is the course that they took. And then this is just a map that I have of the 2015 race. This is just hanging in my wall. So I thought I'd show that as well. All in all, these guys went down in history as some of the greatest drivers in the Baja 1000. Now let's move on to the 2000s with the upgrades in bikes and the crazy crowds that run along the race course. The 2000s brought us one of the best motor inventions in dirt bikes ever. According to Cycle News on November 2nd, 2004, in 2002, the first ever fuel-injected dirt bike was created. This is a picture of the first ever fuel-injected dirt bike. And this is what they have turned it into now. Complete different style. With the fuel-injected dirt bikes came better performance for the Baja 1000 race. This allowed the bikes to get better fuel range so that they could take less stops and have faster race times. These fuel-injected motors were not just put in dirt bikes, they were also put in sand rails and side-by-sides. Overall, these are much better than the original carbureted motor. While driving along this course, the drivers have to watch out for spectators. According to the November 2020 issue of Mexico News Daily, Hundreds of thousands of people come to spectate this event every year. Spectators line up along the main trails that the riders go through to watch them fly by at top speeds. The catch is that there's no boundaries as to where the spectators can go, so everyone is lined up not even 10 feet away from where the cars are flying by. Some may even say that watching the race is just as dangerous, if not more dangerous, than actually racing in it. Unfortunately, sometimes the drivers crash and hit the spectators, leaving them with crucial injuries and or fatality. Another thing about these spectators is that some of them will set up booby traps in the middle of the trails so that the riders will crash and get hurt just for their own enjoyment. The 2000s was a crazy and very crucial time for the development of the Baja 1000. Throughout this speech, you have learned about the importance of this legendary race. We have gone from the 60s to present day marking all of the major changes in the industry. This race will always be remembered in history as the most dangerous race in the world. From starting out with just one man with a dream to becoming one of the most well-known races around the world, this race truly proves that anything is possible if you put your mind to it.